What's going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. Merry Christmas. Coming at you guys with two videos today. I'm going to shoot both of them in different videos. Updates on the 125 gallon and 55 gallon tank. I'm giving you guys the 125 gallon first because you guys have been asking and asking and asking and I appreciate that. That does not bother me one bit. People entertained by my videos and wanting more it makes me want to do more videos it drives me to get up grab the camera and film some crap so why did I wait so long to do an update on the 125 gallon well look at it it's finally getting back on track this tank is starting to become a beautiful planet tank again it's not quite there you can still see I've got a lot of planning to do over here um, I actually have all these LEDs off. I'll show you in a minute with all the lighting on. But I had to adjust the camera. I had to turn down the brightness on the camera. Uh, it, the tank is actually a lot brighter than this. I had to turn down the brightness. Um, I had to adjust it to the camera would pick it up. Right now, the Fluval 48-inch uh, plant lights, LEDs, are on this tank. And that's the only thing on right now. And if you guys want to see the video where I do a review on that, click this video right here in the... Uh, in the video but um let's do a walkthrough and talk about my tank talk about the life of the tank what problems i've had with this tank and what are my plans for the future okay the first problem i had with this tank was a while back about a year ago when this tank was fairly new and the sink in the basement hasn't been used in years well i didn't know this but i learned it the hard way when you don't use tap for a while tap water that water in the pipes, the, it can leach ammonia, it, it, it can leach all kinds of shit. Well, when I did a big water change on my tank with the tap water that wasn't used for since God knows when, it actually leached a lot of ammonia. So basically what I did, I, I, pure, I poured pure ammonia into my tank and I killed a lot of my fish because, you know, my tap water upstairs doesn't have a lot of ammonia, but the one in the basement, it had ammonia and it basically wreaked havoc on my tank. Uh, that was my first mistake. My second mistake was blackbeard algae. Uh, blackbeard algae was basically caused by using CO2 and not using CO2. And I'm sorry the tank's a little cloudy because I just did a water change not even 12 hours ago, so it's still kind of cloudy. Uh, and I'm going to do my video on the FX6 clean next. But that was my second mistake. When you have fluctuations in CO2, you're going to have a um, blackbeard algae outbreak. And that's what caused it. My third mistake was velvet. Velvet really wasn't my fault, and I think it was introduced to a fish that was introduced in this tank. I should have quarantined it, no doubt, no, uh, no doubt about it. But velvet outbroke, and that's not anybody's uh, fault, really. It's, it's like ick on steroids. Marine velvet is even worse. But if you know what velvet is, you fully understand why everything, well, not everything, but I lost more than half my t uh, tank mates. Uh, there's one ballast shark in here now. He's pushing about almost nine inches now. It doesn't look like it, but this is a six foot long tank. But um, the other ballast shark, which was bigger than him, died from velvet, which sucks. Uh, but him and that rainbow get along fine. I, all my other rainbows died from velvet too. I lost a couple angels, uh, rams, but you can see I've stocked back my tank. And we're going to talk about the stock in my tank as well. Um, that was the third bad thing to happen in my tank and the, the last bad thing to happen in my tank was uh, no I take that back I take that back uh, I learned the hard way as well with a deep dirt bed I can't do over a 50-55% water change because the water pressure drops and it allows the nitrogen gas and everything built up in the sand bed to be released and that killed a few of my fish too. Now you're wondering what's going on with that. Well when you have anaerobic bacteria you can have deadly gases, nitrogen gas build up in your dirt bed or in your sand bed in the seawater. You get really bad stuff with sea seawater. You get uh, sulfuric uh, acid and uh, that was the fourth bad thing. I, I found out that I could not do more than a 55 percent water change on my tank or I would the pressure would drop too much and uh, it will release those gases. Now you're saying you're making a lot of mistakes. 
But you know what? That's how you learn. You cannot learn anything in this hobby without doing mistakes. Uh, someone has to make the mistakes in order to somebody to post it online how to do it correctly. Mistakes are the gateway to success. That's the way I see it. And my uh, last mistake, hopefully, it's not going to be my last, but hopefully it'll be my last for a while. And it really wasn't a uh, an error. No fish died from it. It was just a utter plant growth disaster. Uh, I was really busy back in June. I had family down. They're down again. Uh, I'm glad they're down. So I, I wasn't I wasn't home for a long time. And my tank was on cruise control, as Mr. Saltwater Tank TV calls it. And my timer. Uh, I had one timer controlling, uh, damn, what is it, like six, seven lights on this tank? Uh, maybe more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had uh, one timer controlling eight lights. Well, that timer broke. Whenever I came down here to feed them, which was rare because I knew that they could take care of themselves, but uh, whenever I came down to feed them, the lights were on, and, and the time of day I came down here is when the lights were supposed to be on. So what I didn't realize, the lights were on for about two weeks, and I wasn't coming down here every day. I was coming down here maybe every four days, and they were okay. They were being fed well, uh, and I didn't realize it, but the plants went out of control. The plants actually grew to the extent where the water was black. No light could penetrate through. This was the main culprit right here, and I finally got it back in my tank, and I love this plant right here. That is Luigia Cuban, and it's still got its immersed leaves on, meaning above water leaves grown above water and uh, that plant it can really get some pretty leaves on it and they'll turn pinkish purple when it's uh, submerged leaves but that plant grew to the point where it was just insane and uh, it was a culprit of blacking out my tank and I had highlight plants in here as you guys can see I've got a few red plants in here and I'm not done replanting but um, that was one of the main culprits uh, when you when you have low light in a highlighted plant tank, all your plants are gonna die, and that's what happened. And I'm still replanting. I'm taking it slow. I don't want to. I don't want to shock the system. You know, even though you say plants aren't gonna shock the system, I just want to make sure my system is introduced. I introduce plants slowly, just like I introduce fish. You know, if I go out and buy a whole bunch of fish, a plants, I can go out and get more fish to balance off the nitrogen cycle, to speak. Uh, that was the last bad thing to happen in my tank, and you guys can see I'm slowly replanting, and it's starting to look good again, and I'm ready to do an update. So, without further ado, let's talk about the livestock in this tank. There are seven albino, albino quarry cats. That's the oldest one right there. I think that's a female, too. She's about two years old. Um, there's two German blue rams. There's two Bolivian rams, both male and female. Uh, for each pair. They have not spawned yet, but I th actually I think the German Blue Rams did spawn once, but uh, I think their eggs were eaten. But uh, I'm going to introduce two more electric Blue Rams and maybe two German Blue Rams, I mean uh, Golden Rams too. I've got one Bo uh, Bozmani Rainbow. He's the last survivor of the Rainbow from the, al uh, the Velvet Outbreak. I don't think I'm going to introduce any more Rainbows. I might. I don't know yet. Uh, there's about 15, 20 neon tetras in here, which I'm kind of debating on adding anymore because they're always hiding. Um, there's so many plants in here. That's what they do in the wild. They live in dense vegetation, and I, I never see them, so it's kind of like whatever. There, there might be a glass catfish in here, one or two. Like I said, I never see them. For one, they're almost invisible, and this is a heavy planet tank, so it's hard to say if he's still in here or not. Uh, there's a few Serpe Tetras in here. There was originally 15. A few died off. I had to replace them just from old age. Uh, I've got to replace them. There are three albino plecos in here, bushy nose plecos. There's actually one right there. And there's one that was over here. You might have seen it a second ago. Actually, it's right there beside the uh, micro swords, that yellow dot moving around. But uh, there's one ballast shark. He's a survivor of three. Long story about him. Uh, I bought three ballast sharks the size of a neon tetra at a Walmart. I rescued them. Uh, I quarantined them, and I had them with the rainbows, so it really wasn't quarantined, but they were in a tank that really didn't matter. Uh, the first ballast shark was the biggest. He died off simply because Walmart wasn't giving him the proper care. He died off. I had them in a very, 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 very dense plant tank. 
like five times dense than this, so I could barely even see them in the tank. I just wanted to make sure their water quality was good, and they had a, lots of hiding spots. So the other two survived well. They went in this tank, and the second one died from the velvet outbreak. Now this is my last survivor, and actually he's the smallest of the three. I love that fish right there. Ballast sharks, I think they look amazing with angelfish. And let's talk about the angelfish. There are a couple mated pairs in here. The blushing is a pair with the uh, black one right there. I call them yin and yang. Um, that blue silver one actually came from KG Tropicals uh, from a local breeder in King George, Virginia. That lace veil right there is actually getting some good growth on it. I think it's female. Uh, has not spawned with any other angelfish in this tank yet because I don't think it has a, uh, there's not an even number of angelfish in here. And uh, there are two other angelfish that are marbles which are not present at the moment. They're acting very strange. Um, they've been laying on their back for months now. It's like they have a parasite or something. I'm not too sure. They're, they're eating. They're, they don't, they're not dying, but they can't swim properly. I don't know. Maybe it's a swim bladder dysfunction. I've got to do some research on that. But uh, they're the mated pair, and they were actually the dominant fish in this tank. And now they're at their worst. And then there's that one more marble female in the corner. I'm sorry you guys can't see it. It's uh, right there. And that's it for the angelfish. There are about, I introduced 30 auto catfish in here. Now from the velvet disease and all that stuff, I want to say there's probably about 10 in here now. So there's not as many fish as there used to be in here. And I'm going to introduce more that I've got more plants in here now. Uh, now let's talk about the plants. This is the last thing I'm going to be talking about in the video because the video is getting long. But you guys wanted a video update in this tank. And then I'll move into equipment. We'll move from the far side. Um, oh, God. There's a hygrophilia right there. So I'll post the name on the YouTube, in the uh, video. There's a bunch of Amazon swords over here. There's Java Fern right here. Anubius Nana on Driftwood. Uh, a colony of Dwarf Sag. Let's see here. That pink thing right there is Rotala Wallachai. Uh, there's a colony of Water Sprite Wisteria back there that I let grow and then I sell it off. Um, a Pongetan Alvacerus. Dustin was talking about that plant. I just trimmed it back. That's a really nice plant. I think it's the best Apongetan ever. Uh, this tall plant back here that I mentioned before is Luigia Cuban or Cuba. This green plant that kind of all blends in. This diagonal part right here is Rotala uh, Nanjinsan. Then I have a, collar of also, a colony of uh, Water Sprite Wisteria that I trim to make it look more Dutch-like. This foreground plant right here is Dwarf Pennywort. Blinks Balixa Japonica, if I'm pronouncing that right for once. This little plant right here that's kind of got a reddish tent is uh, Rotala Indica. This colony right here is trend back. It was all the way up to here. But this is one of my favorite plants, Rotala Wallachi. And you can see the difference. I take care of this one a lot more. This is uh, Hygrophilia Augustifolia. Then you got... Uh, shit. Nasea Red, which is one of my favorite plants as well. Uh, Staryo Gun Repens. I had Pogo Stamen Heferi down here, but I think the Battle Shark was actually eating it. Um, or maybe it was the Plecos uprooting at the Cory Cats. I'm not sure. But it wasn't, it didn't have good root systems, so I think somebody uprooted it and it just floated away, got stuck in the filter. But I'm going to give it a try in the future again. Um, before I had a colony of uh, Rotala Indica right here as a foreground plant. I just kept it really short. I might do that again. I'm not sure. Dwarf Baby Tears. Yeah, Dwarf Baby Tears. I'm growing Dwarf Baby Tears. I can do it. That's right there on that uh, green plate right there. Uh, there's a bit of Java Moss in these rocks. And in the corner right here, there's a little more Java Moss right about there. I've got more uh, Amazon Swords right here. And in between the Amazon Swords, oh, shoot, almost knocked the camera over. That little plant right there is star grass. I've got a rare plant, uh, Hygrophilia pinnatophyta. Uh, what else do I have? Crypt Wendidi. It's going to be right there. Micro swords right here. And it kind of is all blending in. Uh, Luigia broadleaf, which is not growing fast. I don't understand it. Uh, I'm wondering if it's such under high light, it's not growing high. I'm not sure. Rotala uh, Nanjasan again. I'm going to get my two colonies back there, but they're not growing. I just, I don't understand it. Um, 
There's also a dwarf water lily right in here above the uh, in front of the Nisea. But like I said, since the high light is not growing high, which is good. Um, this is one of my new favorite plants. This plant right here is also called the mosaic plant, this tall thing right here. It actually got beaten up a lot by the uh, FX6 water flow when I had this thing down really low in water le uh, level. This plant is really beautiful when it when it branches above the water um, surface. It will look like a mosaic and that's why they call it the mosaic plant. Instead of having leaves all the way down, it only has leaves up near the top and around the uh, uh, surface of the water. This video is getting really long guys. I've got the FX6 running, Fluval uh, 48 inch LEDs, and Lowe's 5000K LED lights. Comment, right, subscribe. I hope you like this video. It's been long, but I've updated everything. I'll see you guys next time. Please share the video. Later guys.